Yeah, you know, of all the nutrients, of the major nutrients, phosphorus is one that is misunderstood because uh, generally speaking, for example, if we compare it to nitrogen, you put nitrogen on, you'll use at least 50 up to 70 percent, at least, into the crop that year. Whereas uh, you put phosphorus on, it might be as low as 10 percent uptake, more averaging probably around 20, and at best maybe 25, 30. And so when you first hear that, you think, well, you've got 80 or 70 percent of what you put on wasn't used. But that's misleading because it, it's in the soil and it can be used for future crops. Phosphorus is one you really do have to, <clears throat> you really have to manage it in the longer term. And so if you're really deficient, you could add a lot of phosphorus in a year and you, you could only build the, the yield up to a certain amount. Whereas if you get a program where you gradually build up the availability of the phosphorus, uh, you can actually achieve better yields when you have really good growth years. And so that it's sort of, you, you have it available in the soil, when the good growth conditions are there, it's available and you can uh, make good use of that. But if you're running really lean, like really low in availability, when you get those really good growth years, you're not going to be able to capitalize on it and, and grow a really high yielding crop. So how efficient is it? In long term research has shown uh, that it's at l around 90% efficient. So for any one year, you're using phosphorus from last year and maybe up to 10, 20 years uh, from phosphorus fertilizer that you added is available and helps grow that, this year's crop. And so we, we look at it, five years isn't a bad way to look at it. If, if you had an adequate level in the soil, let's say, you know, adequate but not excess, and you quit using phosphorus, first year you wouldn't see much difference or the second year but then third fourth by the time the fifth year comes around your yields are going to start dropping what we recommend phosphorus is one the soil tests are very reliable if you get a good average soil sample from a field the number you get gives you a pretty good idea of phosphorus availability and then you can work off that. If it's on the low side, then maybe you should add some phosphorus above crop removal. So let's say a crop removes 30 pounds of phosphate, maybe you'd put on every year 35 or 40, gradually build the soil up. And then once you get it up to a certain level, it doesn't make economic sense to keep adding extra. Then you just try and match what you're removing with your crop. So if you're on a, re a fairly low soil, crop uses 30, just as an example. Let's say you add 40 every year for five years, and then you could probably cut back to 30 and just uh, remain in balance with the crop. Well, what we see, and something we're seeing in the market, there's some people will there's products that you can add to a phosphorus fertilizer and they say it'll increase the efficiency and it can marginally like I'm not saying some of these products don't help but then they make the mistake of cutting their rate way back so they'll say this is more efficient so you can use less and then they they start putting on less than what the crops removing and in the long term it's that rate rate is more important than you might gain a little efficiency by some additive, but if you lower your rate in the long term, you're shooting yourself in the foot.